Hallelujah. What can we say to these things? Hallelujah. My God. It's, the Lord has planted wonderful gifts among us. I said, my goodness, you sound like Smokey Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> a sanctified Smokey Robinson. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Elder Perry. Thank the Lord for his ministry to us today. Thank Minister Donnell for his labor of love and the band and our men's ministry, our men's chorus praise team. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I, I will begin today by saying, and, and I don't want you to take this negative. Uh, by the way, uh, Deacon Montague Johnson Joyce, is that you back there? God bless you, son. You are going to make me cry. I'm glad to see you. Hallelujah. I want to say that and before I begin today, that I, I want I want to this to be a a, a message of encouragement because Jesus wants to encourage and strengthen His people. And, and he understands that that there are trials and tests and afflictions. He allows it. But he tells us all things work together for good. And along the way, as we are being developed and matured and, and brought to our, the fulfillment of our purpose in Jesus and his will for our lives, sometimes along the way, we may be discouraged, we may be depleted, we may be tried and tested. And I, I, I will say to you as, as, as God's under shepherd, I feel collectively and individually, maybe not, I'm sure, not to the fullest and total degree, but I feel your burden, your heaviness, your, your afflictions, your pain, your disappointments, your apathy. I feel it. Uh, I I spend hours awake caring for the City of Life Christian Church. I spend agonizing moments, spend time before the Lord because of what you're going through. 
You're not alone. You're not alone. Jesus told Peter, Satan desires to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But I prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen your brother. He wants us. We need each other. I, I need you. Even if you don't need me, I need you. So today, I want to talk, uh, uh, share with you what the Lord has, has given me. It's a message of encouragement. It's a message of exhortation. He meets us where we are. The passage has been read in Lamentations, the third chapter, beginning at verse 21 to 26. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore, Will I hope in him? The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. From that passage, I will speak to you today. Jesus in our suffering. Jesus in the midst of our suffering. Jesus in the battle with us. Jesus in the valley with us. Jesus in the storms with us. Jesus in the dry places with us. Never leaving us alone. He's always with us. He's always for us. Thank you, Jesus. He's always around us, over us, under us. He's, he's a hedge. We are never left to ourselves. Doubt him. When we or at odds with him. He is faithful to us. He is faithful to us. Hallelujah. My message focus is rest for our soul can only be found in the purpose of Jesus. You, 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 there are struggles that, that I, I, I have been saying that Jesus will never allow suffering in the life of a born-again believer unless it accomplishes his will and purpose for their lives. And I have found that that is a hard piece of meat for the saints to swallow. That's a hard chunk to digest. And I understand because you don't like suffering I don't like suffering. And none of us on our own would choose to suffer. 
but Jesus, our path is not one that we, cho we choose. Hebrews 12 and 1, wherefore seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. He chooses it for us. And it is as individual as our fingerprint. But he says, I've already run the race. I've already run your race. I know the dry spots. I know the deserts. I know the storms. I know the valleys. Well, Lord, what should I do? Follow me. And know that I am with you. I will never leave you nor forsake. I said to you, I promise you, I've committed to you, all things will work together. I'll make it work together for your good. Your setback is a setup for what I'm doing in your life. I quoted Abraham Lincoln last week, and I can't get it out of my spirit. He said, if I know I have a task that of chopping down a tree that requires eight hours, he says, I will spend the first six hours sharpening my axe. Jesus prepares us for every assignment. The preparation may take longer than the assignment, but he wants us to be ready. It took David a long time to be prepared for Goliath. He didn't, he didn't stand before Goliath very long, but he was prepared. Hallelujah. Jesus is the potter, and we are the clay. Jesus' purpose for our suffering, that's conditioning, that's preparation. He has a purpose. He has a purpose. Everything he allows in our lives, he has a purpose. He has a purpose. He has a purpose in everything that comes to us. He allows. Everything that comes to us, he's, he's already been stamped by him. Before it gets to us, it has to pass through his hands. And if there is something that we can't handle, he stops it. So when it comes to us, he comes with his grace. My grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My grace is sufficient. Purpose to condition us for his purpose in our lives. His purpose for all suffering is one of two C's, to condition or correct us. There are times when we need corrective action. To put us back on the course. But even when he's correcting us, he's conditioning us. So it's always about conditioning. The passage from Lamentations, the, the, the book of Lamentations written by Jeremiah, it's, gives us the picture of suffering of the children of Judah as a result of the destruction of Jerusalem and their subsequent captivity by Babylon. It is a picture of suffering that God allowed as a corrective slash conditioning measure in order to achieve his will and purpose in the lives of Judah. Lamentation gives grief, the picture of the grief of suffering 
that comes to the human heart with God's corrective measures in their lives. But it is also gives us a picture of the hope and mercy of God that is ever present. That is, is ever present. That is ever present. Even when he is chastening us. Lamentations is the wailing wall of the Bible. Go to Jerusalem at you go to where the temple was and is the day's version. There is a wailing wall where people gather and cry out in prayers. Jews and Christians and Muslims crying out because of the condition of mankind and the world individually. In, in, in the book of Lamentations, which is, it is, Jeremiah is lamenting, he is crying, he is wailing because of what God's people are going through. Not, not, not because they were abiding, because they were not disobedient, irreverent, ungodly. Chapter 1 and 2 gives us an overview of the lamenting of the sorrows that has befallen J Jerusalem, Judah. It, it, it gives us a, a national, it gives us a macro view, it gives us a 30,000 foot, it's a holistic view. But when you get to chapter 3 of Lamentation, now it's individual. So the Lord is bringing us, he's bringing his body, his bride into oneness universally. He's doing it in the city of life, but he's also working on us individually, bringing us to that place where we are totally one with him, without spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing. And, and the closer we come to that perfection, the light gets brighter. And the brighter the light is, the more the spots are going to be revealed. Cracks are going to be exposed. Because he is bringing us to a place without spot, wrinkle, blemish. It takes fine. Jeremiah begins to show us ourselves. We can see ourselves in this. Chapter 3, he's not no longer talking about to get to chapter 3, he, because it requires all of us to go backwards. He always take you forward. Build some three. If you've been searching and nothing working, I got good news. Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. 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 When you feel as dry as a sandpaper, Jesus loves you. When you feel like throwing in the towel, Jesus loves you. When you feel like giving up, don't give up on him. He won't give up on you. Hallelujah. He has been his bow and set me as a mark for his arrow. Lord, it feels like, 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 like you are targeting me. 
You want to bring me down. You want me to cry, uncle. Why? He has filled me with bitterness. He had made me drunken with the wormwood. It's bitter. He had broken my teeth. It covered me with ashes. Verse 17, thou hast removed my soul far off from peace. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. See, the Lord shows us transparency in the scriptures so we can be real with Jesus you don't have to fake even if you're angry with him you can tell him Jesus I know I shouldn't feel this way but I'm angry because I feel you have forsaken me Jesus I don't feel that you're being fair with me he shows us, he opens the scriptures that shows us our humanity. We can see it in John the Baptist when he declared so boldly, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. But when his neck was on the line, he said, Are you the one or should we look for another? Jesus never rebuked him. He said, go tell John. Go tell him what you have seen and heard. When I ask you and plead with you for what I want, you don't give me what I want, but you give me what I need. He doesn't give more abundantly. I want you to see me in the darkest night, in the middle of the storm, when his disciples thought, that they were desolate. They were destined for destruction. Jesus shows up walking on the water, and the first thing he says is, Be of good cheer. I am with you. There's a purpose. There's a purpose. He gets to verse 18. And what did he see? The subtle transition. And I said, my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. In all of his complaining, he never mentions the name of God. But now, it's all right to complain. You, you can be transparent. Jesus appreciates our forthrightness. Don't, don't, don't try to hoodwink him. Thomas was with him doing all of his earthly ministry. But when he was resurrected, Thomas says, I'm not going to believe it until I feel the wound and the scars. Jesus prefers that than to use a lot of religious jargon and your heart is far from him. Be honest with him. Jesus, I'm angry with you. Jesus, I'm angry with you. I'm disappointed. I don't think you are being fair with me. I know I shouldn't feel this way, but you're the one that can help me. Jesus, I'm ignorant, but you, you are my knowledge. Jesus, I'm weak, but you are my strength. Jesus, I'm lonely, but you are my friend. That stick is closer than a brother. Jesus, I'm down and up, but you are up and in. Jesus, you know what's best for me. Hallelujah. He calls the name of the Lord. I, I, I'm saying right where we are, and, and you all have heard me give this 
testimony, uh, th there was a, a minister in Baltimore, Clayton Johnson. He became very prosperous, so prosperous until money skewed him. He was a developer, and he was doing well, living high on the hog, and he, he had driving his new Rolls Royce. And all he was concerned about then was Jesus was a means to his end to help him get rich. And the Lord began to warn him. He said to him, I'm warning you. I saved you for my purpose. He said it got so, this, this was, of course, back in the 60s or 70s, but that's when the cassettes were in, in vogue then. They were in style. And in his, in his brand new Rolls Royce, he's playing a cassette tape with music that wasn't Christ-like. The Lord spoke to him through the cassette tape and said, I'm warning you, this is your last chance. He, put, he turned the cassette off. He went on about his business. He was getting ready to sign the contract. The next morning, another financially prosperous deal. So he was going. It was in the middle of the winter. So he went in the basement to turn the furnace on so the building would be warm. But the furnace had gone out. And so he turned it off, and he waited about five minutes for the gas to dissipate. But the, the building was so full, the room was so full of gas. And when he struck a match to light the pilot, the building exploded and blew him out of the building. He was across the street in the grass, burning up on fire. His flesh was burning. He said, in that condition, the, the sense, his mind that he had, he began to say, Jesus, Jesus. Like Jeremiah, he calls, verse 18, the Lord, the Lord. He said, when he called Jesus, he heard the conversation between the devil and Jesus. The devil said to Jesus, I thought you said I could have him. Jesus said, yes, but he called my name. It doesn't matter how far we stray. It doesn't matter how low we get. We'll never get beyond the love of Jesus. You can't get beyond his love. You can't get beneath his love. You can't get above his love. Yes, but he called my name. My child, a child might stray. A loving parent, when they say, Mom or Dad, I need you. Doesn't matter what they do, they, 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 they are going to be there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember when I was in the military, I had gotten, a, they thought I had a, a brain concussion, and my mother was, they thought they had to open my scalp, and my mother was getting ready to come, and the doctors, they, they, the saints prayed, and I was, the doctors said, said no, he's going to be fine. And, and so my oldest brother, who's going home to be with the Lord, he told my mother, he said, Mom, we got an update report. He's, he's going to be fine. You don't need to go. My mother said, you don't need to go. I'm going to see my baby. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you think that's love, think about the love of Jesus. Brother Johnson got to be, after 
exponential, I don't know, numerous surgeries. But one of the doctors that, that operated on him, the Lord restored him. And the last thing I know, he was serving Jesus with everything he had. But one of the doctors that worked on him came with diagnosed with cancer. And when the doctor was in the hospital, the doctor made a request, go find that man, have him come and pray for me. Jeremiah said now the transition from his complaining to being focused on Jesus. You see, the enemy, it is the diligent campaign of the devil to take our eyes away from Jesus. He wants to focus on your condition. He wants to focus on your situation. He wants to focus on you, on me. Take your, look at anything, don't look at Jesus. Because when you look at him, he's transformational. All you have to do is to see him, and you will be transformed. Now, verse 18, look at, look at the same man in verse 19. Remembering mine affliction and my miseries, the wormwood and the gall, my soul, my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. One of the things that suffering does, that God allows, it brings us to humility. Our suffering leads to humility. It breaks us down to the place that there is nothing under us but our foundation. It takes us back to our North Star. It strips us from everything. It strips us from our loved ones. It strips us from all of our resources. It strips us that nothing can help us anymore. That we have to trust on him. He can do that. He can make you isolated. Put you in a place where now I have your full attention. Now I can talk to you and you can hear me. Now there is no distractions. Now you can hear me even after if I whisper you can hear me. I want you to make me your first response not your last resort. I want you to look to me. I want you to focus on me when things are going well. When things are not going well, the thing that should never change is your focus on me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Jesus takes us down, back down to our foundation, we can sing those old hymns, all oh, for grace to trust him more. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Can we find a loved one so dear? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, that, that when you're there, there's just you and Jesus. It, it, it begins to blend that oneness. It brings us to oneness and total dependence on him through our obedience to his word. He's got to break us down to build us up. He's got to, he does addition by subtraction. We, we are multiplied in him, but he got to take us away from our earthly system. Got to take us away from ourselves. He got to remove the things that blur 
us, that the clouds that get between us and him, mm -hmm. we got to remove and remember, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah, he has then I recall, after he is humbled, he's down now. Then I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. I recall his words, his voice begin to speak to me. St. John 14 and 26, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have told you. And when he strips you down and you are all alone with him and nobody else can help you, his word begins to flourish like a fountain in us. Hallelujah! What can separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus? Not even death can separate me. No death, no life, no angel, no principality, no powers, no things present, no things yet to come, no height, no depth, no any other creature. His word began to spring in. He promised me all things work together for good to them that love God to the call according to his purpose. Being confident of this very thing, he which has begun a good work in you, in me, he will keep on performing it. He performs it in the valley. He's performing it in the dark. He's performing it in our tears. He's performing it in our loneliness. He has never stopped working. He's 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 working when you see him. He's working when he's not. When you don't see him, he's still working. When you feel like he's abandoned you, he's still working. When you feel as dry as the Sahara Desert, he's still working. When you feel like everything is against you, he's still working. Because he never stops working. He never stops working. He which has begun a good work in you, he's going to keep on performing it. He's going to keep on performing it. He's going to keep on performing it. And nothing can stop him. I got to feed myself with his word. I can't let my natural sense guide me. It has to be his word. What did he say? You are more than a conqueror. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I'll stay on the battlefield. I will remain faithful to no matter what happens in my life. No matter what happens in my life. My health is taken away, but you can't take Jesus away. My family destroyed, but you can't take Jesus away. Friendship, relationships dissolve, but you can't take Jesus away. I lose my job, but you can't take Jesus away. I might file bankruptcy, but you can't take Jesus away. 
You can take my house, you can take my car, you can take my clothes, you can take my bank account, but you can't take Jesus away. He brings us, breaks us down. All we have left is him. Then he says, this is all you need. Hallelujah. 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 He keeps telling us, my grace, my grace, my grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul says, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Whose report are you going to believe? Hallelujah. Let God be true and every man be a liar. Brokenness leads us to oneness. Jesus has to break us before he makes us into oneness. He got to take us the stuff out of us. He, he got to get us out of us so he can put him in us. Lord, this is my prayer, my personal prayer. Jesus, do what you have to do in me, but I want to be one with you. Hallelujah. It requires all of us because he promises all of him. It is my desire, eternal, forever, uncompromising for the city of life, as long as I am your pastor. And when the day comes and I'm not, just remember what I said. Don't let anything take you away from Jesus. Don't let your pastor, don't let first lady, don't let any church organization, don't let nothing in the church take you away from Jesus. Don't let sickness, don't let job, don't let prosperity, don't let family, don't let anything take you away from Jesus. Let me finish with Jeremiah and then we'll be finished for today. He says, Therefore, this I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. This hope is biblical hope. Hope and faith, biblical hope and faith, the necessary ingredient is the Word of God. Without the Word of God, there is no basis for biblical hope or faith. We need the word. And then prayer lines us up with the word. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. The fact that you are breathing is a testimony that Jesus loves you. Because it is of his mercies that you're not consumed. It's the only reason why you're sitting here today. Because God is merciful. Jesus is full of mercy to us. 
None of us wants God's justice. None of us wants his justice. And the reason that we exist, that we are here, that we are breathing, is because he is merciful. In his mercies, that he gives you a new dosage every morning, that means that they never deteriorate. His mercies are new because they never deteriorate. There's something about that when we think about the magnitude of Jesus. Listen, whatever he gives out, I don't care if you had a billion dollars, if you give one dollar out, then you are a billionaire minus one dollar. Whatever Jesus is, he can give you and he never diminished. He'd been pouring out the Holy Ghost and he's just as full of the Holy Ghost as he ever was. That's why you don't have to worry about somebody else's blessing. Their blessing don't affect you. Because he is never diminished. He gives you righteousness, peace, and joy. And he's still as full of righteousness, peace, and joy as he ever was. They are new every morning. They are non-diminishing. You can get as full of the joy of Jesus and you haven't taken, you haven't minus him at all. He's just as full of joy for the next person. There's nobody like Jesus. The Lord is my portion. Look at him now. The Lord is my portion. Is this the same Jeremiah that said the Lord was against him? Now he's saying, he is my poor both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. Jesus is our portion. Saints, I want to leave that with you today. No matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, Jesus is our portion. Jesus is our portion. He is our undiminishing portion. He is our undiminishing portion. Life application. Let Jesus work his perfect will in us. How? Daily applying God's word with a consistent prayer life. This discipline transforms us into oneness with Jesus and fulfills his purpose in our lives. Oneness with Jesus. Oneness with Jesus makes, equips us to be one with each other. Let's stand. Hallelujah. I promise you that Lee's chicken is waiting for you. And they're diminishing. But you are in a place now where you have access to an undiminishing source. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Oh, Saints, there's so many wonderful things about Jesus. There's so many wonderful things about Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. In the midst of our struggles, our tribulation, our trials, where is Jesus? He's right there. Very quickly, there was a, this is during the Vietnam War. A mother wrote, her son was killed in the war. She wrote a pastor and said, where was Jesus when my son died? He's in the same place he was when his son died. 
She said, there's one difference. When his son died, he had his back turned toward him. When your son died, he had his face turned toward him and you. His grace is unto us. When Jesus died on the cross, the Father turned his back on him. His grace, his face is towards us. He is for us. Everything about him, he is for us. He is for us. He is for us. Let's read our scripture for the day. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, when? You can't, don't take that out. After we have endured a while. What will he do? Make you perfect. Establish, strengthen. It's all in Jesus. It's all in Jesus. Folks, I can't give you nothing else. This Thursday will be 13 years. I came in the doors of City of Life giving you Jesus. I'm going to go out the doors giving you Jesus because that's all I have. That's all I have. That's all I have. I can't give you nothing else but Jesus. If he's not enough, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. If Jesus is not enough for you, I don't know what to tell you. I don't have nothing else for you. My first appeal, I want those you want to experience this great salvation, the abundance of this salvation, the goodness, this relationship, this intimacy that Jesus has. He died so we could live. He went to hell so we could go to heaven. Hallelujah. Hmm. you're here and you want the new birth, you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues, and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sin, my first appeal is to you. Come. Come. Jesus is here to do that in your life today. Let's look to the Lord. Lord Jesus, Lord, we stand in your presence, naked and open. Nothing of our substance is hid from you. You know our rising up and our down setting. You know our going out and our coming in. You know everything about us, and yet you still love us. So, Lord, the soul that you you have been enduring and speaking and pulling them. Lord, they think, they might have thought that it was them. But Jesus, your word says no man comes to you unless you draw him. You've been drawing them. You have been speaking to them. Lord, you have been pulling them toward you. Help them to come forth. Say, what must I do to be saved? even if it is to gain a greater understanding of New Testament salvation. I want to be saved. I want to live for Jesus. Time is winding up. Time is short. The harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Come now. Come. They have one soul, one soul, one soul, one soul. One soul, hallelujah. Voice over one soul that you need prayer for. Come, come. Elder Fields, hallelujah. God bless you in Jesus' name. Why they're coming for prayer, somebody else. If the Lord is speaking to you right now, amen. We're going to ask you to come. 
In the name of Jesus. Come on. My Savior, the one. Come on, come on. The Lord is calling you. Man, woman, boy, or girl. Why they ministry this morning? In the name of Jesus. Come on, pray, church. They're yet coming. They're yet coming. I trust in God. Hallelujah. My Savior. My Savior. Come on. Somebody else, the Lord is calling you. Man, woman, boy, or girl. While they're ministering on the altar, whatever the need is, give it over to the Lord right now. Believe the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Got to trust him. Got to believe him. Come on, come on. While they're yet praying, while they're yet ministering, Lord, bless them. Give them what they need right now. Why? Why we're ministering this song. Trust in God. Believe in God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, meet the needs of your people. Somebody, that message was directly for you. The Lord was speaking directly to you. Lord, you know the needs of your people. You know what they're going through, what they need, Lord. I hope it's in you. I trust is in you. Come on, pray, church. Lord, bless them. On the altar, Lord, we believe you. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise for what you're doing right now, dear God. How you're meeting every need, dear God. How you're answering the prayer. But we believe you right now. You are God all by yourself. And there is nobody like you. There is no other God beside thee. Oh, God, you know the needs of your people right now. Minister to them right now. Give them the answer that they need, Lord. Let's we cry out to you. Give them the answer that they need in the name of Jesus. And we trust you and we believe you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. And he heard, and he answered. Are you seeking him right now? Why are you seeking him right now? And he answered. Lord, we believe you answer the prayers. Lord, we believe you answer the prayers. In the name of Jesus. That's why I trust him. Hallelujah. That's why I trust him. I saw the Lord. Come on, come on, let him minister to you. Come on, let him minister to you. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we're seeking you. We believe in you. You're answering the prayers. You're moving upon your people. In the name of Jesus. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him, God. Come on, y'all. My Savior. Why they Come on, why they ministering? Lord, you know somebody else, the Lord is calling you. Somebody else that needs prayer. You've been trying to make it by yourself. But God won't fail you. God won't fail you. He'll make a way out of no way. Hallelujah. He'll make a way out of no way. He'll give you the victory for his glory right now. And then, come on, we're going to just let the brothers minister that song. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, you know the needs. Lord, you know the need. Ah, oh, God, bless them. Hallelujah. Give them to God by your will, according to your word. We trust you right now. We believe you right now. Ah, oh, God. Oh, God, what they're praying. Oh, God, what they're praying. They're ministering. Oh, God, you're doing it. We trust you. We trust you. You're doing it, Lord, for your glory right now. Come on. My Savior, the one. Come on, saints. Why they get ministering?
need to trust him. I sought the Lord. Hallelujah. And he heard, Lord, we're seeking and you. He Lord, we believe in I you. Lord, we know Lord. that you are the one. Heard, that's the one that's ministering to your people right I now. In the name Lord. of Jesus. And he we heard, give you glory. And he we give you honor. We give you praise. It all belongs to you. on the altar right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus how many really trust him this morning in the name of Jesus how many really trust him this morning he is God all by himself he's the one that's blessing us he's the one that's helping us he's the one that's making a way on the altar he's the one that's blessing his people in the name of Jesus come on lift your hand we trust you, Lord. Hallelujah. Nobody else we're going to trust like we trust our God. Not my mother, not my father, not my brother. But you never fail me, Lord. Hallelujah. That's the song we're going to leave with. Come on, brother, sing it. I mean, he saw and him. He heard, he heard me. He answered He's answering me. Minister to your people, Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your brother. Lift your boy. Lord, you're right here, and we trust you, and we believe you, 
and we hold on to your unchanging hand. We hold on to your unchanging hand. We hold on to your unchanging hand. Oh God, nobody like you. Hallelujah. Nobody like you. They're yet ministering. Hallelujah. That's our dismissal song. Worshiping. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I trust in God. Can you feel the Lord ministering to you right now? I know some say, well, I need to get the least chicken, but can you feel the Lord ministering to you right now? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, bless us. I'm going to pray. Stand to your feet right now. My God, stand to your feet. Those who say, the one who will never. Lord, I thank you. He will never fail. Righteous I Father, trust in God. we're trusting you right now. We believe My in you right now. I'm going to pray for those who have to leave. But I'm going to let these brothers keep ministering for a minute. For those who have to leave. Righteous Father, we thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you for all that you have done, all that you will do. Get the glory out of our life. In the name of Jesus. We trust you. We believe you. I'm going to make a third appeal just right quickly. Perhaps you came here and said, Preacher, I've already been baptized in Jesus' name. Already been filled with the Holy Ghost. But I need a church home. If that's you, man, woman, boy, or girl, the Lord sent you here to be a member of this church. We're going to ask you to come in the name of Jesus. If that's you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Consider yourself dismissed. Who will never fail? Hallelujah. Fellowship with someone. Show them the love of the Lord. Hallelujah. I trust in God. My Savior.